Hello. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Um, we'll just wait for a couple of more minutes uh, for, uh, for other people to join in, and then we'll start. Good morning, Sumit. Um, we are at ten o one. We'll just wait for one more minute and then we'll start. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Dinesh, please, uh, we have a question. I think it's muted. Yes, Dinesh, you're on mute if you want to say something. Maybe some error because of which uh, hand is raised. I see participants are still coming in. We'll just wait for 30 more seconds. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, professors, should we start? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, we're really excited about this pre-program information webinar on a very unique program offered by IM Koikot. Uh, this is a chief finance officer program, um, which covers depths and breadths of tools and techniques that are required for today's finance professors, which features exclusive modules from your Northwestern Kellogg to global, give a global advantage. Um, so we'll quickly go into the agenda. Uh, I'll also introduce the esteemed faculty that we have with us today to discuss about this program. Um, so quickly moving to agenda. Um, so in this webinar, we want to cover up some program details. We want to talk a little about I am Koikot, although it's not necessary, but everybody knows. Um, then I want to introduce our esteemed faculty. Uh, 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 wait and watch, they have such great accolades that you'll be impressed uh, of the people that are teaching this program. Um, then they will deep dive into program highlights. Um, also talk about the Kellogg advantage that comes along with this program. Um, who is this program for uh, and uh, how this program will improve your learning outcomes, um, which will improve uh, uh, multiple things about you as a working professional. Uh, then we'll also go de in details uh, of the program modules um, to, to, go, to cover some of the breadth of the topics that we'll be covering in this program in detail. Uh, 
then we will also be talking about some very important and interesting components of this program that is capstone projects that you do get to do at the end of this program and the business simulations that we'll be able to go through. Uh, also, the case studies that will be covered in the program. Um, then we'll also a little bit touch about the certification that will be given across uh, along with the program, some rules and regulate rules that will be followed for certification. And then we'll open up for Q&A. Um, so at, at this point, I would want to uh, invite uh, Professor Viji Sridharan to start talking about the program. Uh, hello, Professor, please take it away. Yeah. Thank you, Aish, uh, for introducing me. and. Uh asking me to speak about this particular program of importance. Uh, what I find very interesting is this aspect that we have highlighted in this slide. Uh, Gartner's 2023 survey suggests that about 70% of the finance transformations are less impactful, uh, which makes transformation, uh, leading transformation very crucial. But why is it less impactful? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, and of course, I'm sure my co-directors with who I will be introducing shortly uh, also agree, uh, is that uh, a lot of technological change has occurred in the past and is occurring. But alongside, there's been a lot of changes in the supply of information that would be needed. But of course, you know, we are keeping ourselves in the age old aspects that are required in the, in the arena of finance and um, uh, markets, etc. Then if you are not going to keep up with the changes in the trends, we'll be very much lost in the battle. And of course, such kind of information would be very important for us to consider uh, in our uh, accumulation of further latest information. Uh, what we have as an offering is a 12-month program uh, for the new and aspiring CFOs. It will be offered as online sessions by IAMK faculty, which includes me and my co-directors here, and will conclude with a three-day campus immersion at IAM Uh, How will that immersion be designed, et cetera? We can talk about that later because we've got plenty of time for that. Um, of course, the participants will gain global advantage uh, with some of the pre-recorded lectures from Kellogg Education from Northwestern University on leading growth strategy and business leadership in the age of disruption. Uh, uh, they say professor is not audible. Am I audible now? <laughs> Am I audible? Sir, you are audible. Can you please beat louder? Speak louder? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Am I am I okay now? Yeah, yeah. now it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Thank thanks. You. Thanks for that. So with that kind of information change that is required to be acquired by each one of us, we have embarked on this kind of a prestigious program in IIMK. Can we move on to the next slide, Aish? Yes. Yeah. Of course, you know, about IIM Code, I don't have to say a lot uh, because you guys have given us this kind of an accreditation in turn. Uh, by AMBA and Equis, and we are one of the top business schools in India, and we are also ranked in India and also globally. Uh, so uh, we have some kind of resident advantage because of the diversity of the expertise that we have here. And uh, Professor Mridur Kumar Sagar and Professor Abhilash Nair, my co-directors, come with us uh, with bringing a lot of expertise in their own respective areas, which we'll talk about in a few minutes from now. Can we move on to the next slide? Uh, we'll talk about program directors uh, a little later, but uh, what I want to do is more about uh, the program itself. Uh, and uh, as we go along, then we will be able to talk more about how uh, we are able to fit in uh, the program director's roles, fit in with that. Of course, the program highlights live online sessions, uh, three hours per week on Sundays, 12.15 to 3.15 p.m. You know, much thought has gone into the planning of these timings. Um, we have pre-recorded lectures. We have a capstone project. Um, and capstone project will be a project that will be chosen by the participants depending upon what would be their uh, primary need in their, in their companies, etc. So 
we can help to either solve a problem or understand uh, how problem could be resolved, etc. the approaches, or create a new kind of a solution that they already have, which can be then uh, internalized by other members as well. So it's like making a propaganda of a solution that you already have. Apart from that, we have a three-day immersion and a peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, during the live online sessions. Uh, of course, you get the executive alumni status, networking opportunities, practitioner insights from industry experts, uh, which will be outside of our IAMK. So, of course, you will also have those kind of hands-on simulations um, in mergers, acquisitions, and then agroeconomic models, etc. Uh, of course, it will all come with an annual subscription to the Wall Street Journal. So, uh, who is this program for? Seasoned financial leaders and business heads and new and evolving CFOs. Uh, when we say seasoned financial leaders and business heads, we mean people who are already well entrenched in uh, the finance profile within their organizations uh, and who would like to also acquire themselves, acquire for themselves new and updated knowledge uh, that is required for carrying out the state-of-the-art decision-making in the CFO role. Uh, eligibility, uh, graduate or diploma holders from recognized universities, and of course, professional accountants, as we talked about, CA or a company secretary is also eligible. CFAs are also eligible, chartered financial analysts are eligible to join this program. Can we move on to the next slides? Uh, the major takeaways would be to master the key uh, strategic financial decision-making techniques, uh, navigate through the mergers, acquisitions, and IPOs with confidence because you will have more knowledge about how these things happen, what are the key decisions that we should consider in these areas, and harness the data analytics for precise data-driven financial strategies. Of course, our colleagues here can help you with understanding that. Um, lead with integrity, ethical governance, and corporate responsibility, uh, which is, according to IAMK, it's one of the most important aspects and uh, which is needed in today's world. Uh, where anything can be done for the sake of competition uh, and survival, um, unethical ways can actually lead or breed to further unethical activities. And uh, so we want to curb it at the source by trying to say, how can we actually make more profits in the long run by being ethical, the ethical governance aspects of it. And of course, we are also going to talk about innovative design thinking. You know, what's design thinking in general? You know, uh, how is it going to inculcate further capabilities within the CFOs of uh, tomorrow, et cetera? Um, and design thinking, in a nutshell, is nothing but just a kind of a, a iterative, non-linear thinking. Non-linear thinking that can actually help uh, identify newer problems, challenge the existing problems, et cetera, to find new financial solutions. And strategically managing risk, risk management is also important. And of course, uh, we have the uh, C-suite uh, leadership acumen details, etc., which will come later, along with the Kellogg Business School recorded lectures. Can we move on? Of course, before we talk about the program modules in great detail, what I want to share with you is this important aspect. First and foremost, um, according to me, um, participants, dear participants, uh, and I'm sure my colleagues here would also agree with me, is that there are three broad areas, three broad areas that every CFO must be conversant with. The first thing relating to macroeconomic policies and financial markets. That's one major issue, right? And uh, one has to be on top of this issue, understand how these kind of policies are evolved and how do markets emerge? What are the different types of markets? How are decisions made there? Etc. The second aspect relates to corporate finance, corporate governance, and valuation, and that is, you know, something that goes hand in hand with uh, within the organization and its external stakeholders. How are we going to interact? You know, and uh, corporate governance is more about you know constitution of the board and making sure that kind of policies are set properly in order to regulate their actions and the decision making 
that will ultimately lead to ethical and democratic, I insist, ethical and democratic leadership and decision making in that process. That's the second part. The third part, the final part, relates to the internal uh, firm, which is more related to strategy, development, implementation, performance management, and finally, design thinking. How do we improve decisions by involving the techniques of design thinking? So these are the three broad areas, according to me and my colleagues who surely accept this. But what we have done is we have segregated this into specific modules here, right? these three broad areas. So therefore, you can rest assured that whatever details that are specified under each of these modules, which we will not have time to go through, uh, they are you know, integrating uh, the details of uh, the three broad areas that we were mentioning just now. The economic dynamics and the global considerations is module one. Financial markets, again, under module two. This will all come under the first area that we are talking about, uh, which is about the macroeconomic policies and financial markets. Um, the third module is about the advanced corporate finance strategies and business valuation. And uh, this part will actually comprise of the second area that I was talking to you about, corporate finance, corporate governance, and valuation models, etc. Very important area, and uh, of course, we will have more inside information relating to that. And finally, on strategic performance management, once again, this fourth module incorporates the third biggest area that I was talking to you about, which is strategy implementation, performance management, etc., and design thinking. Of course, design thinking here will be comprised in a different module. Can we move further? You know, module five, mergers, acquisitions, IPO. Uh, you know, once again, it will come under the second area that we're talking about in corporate finance, data-driven decision-making, which is more about the analytics part of it. Once again, coming within the second area, design thinking for CFO in module seven, coming within the third area that I was talking about, strategy, performance management, and design thinking, risk management, once again, it falls within two broad areas, I would say, corporate finance, corporate governance, and also strategy, performance management, third area as well. And then leading with AI and digital, um, which is the latest aspect that we all have to be aware of, and uh, CFOs are no exception to this. And uh, of course, followed by this are the two modules that would be provided by the Kellogg Business School of Northwestern University. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the module 10 will be by that, and module 11 would be on corporate governance and ethical leadership, which is where we will cover the latest aspects relating to ethical decision making, ESG, financial reporting, corporate governance, etc. Okay, there are, there are some overlaps here between the modules and the three broad areas that I was talking about, but uh, the idea here is to make sure that you understand that we are covering three broad areas, but of course, um, divested in multiple modules here. That's what we are. Um, of course, you know, I, when I have questions, I'll probably take up the questions later. Uh, let me let me go to the previous slide. Yeah, strategic thinking for CFOs. Um, then uh, that's also very critical as a CFO. Uh, what he should be doing in correspondence with uh, uh, with the CEO of the organization, followed by once again of Kellogg Education on business leadership in an age of disruption. Uh, which is exactly right, because this, this is an age of disruption. A lot of technological changes have been happening concurrently. And C-suite leadership, which is very critical once again. Um, in fact, one of the most critical areas that we need to be aware of in order to not just survive, but also succeed. You know, that There are people who would always say, I want to just thrive, I want to survive. But more than that, uh, we also need to succeed. And C-suite leadership will be of handy information regarding this. Uh, we also have some capstone project. Uh, and this will be a very critical one. We will be enhancing uh, the knowledge that we gain through the program in order to uh, identify a suitable opportunity uh, uh, within the organization as a problem uh, and craft a kind of a solution for them, a tangible, actionable solution. That's what we are actually looking for based upon the learnings. And this is to just give us a kind of a feeling that at the end of the program, 
you guys already are aware of uh, uh, how to integrate the learning. You have gained the learning, and with that, whatever problems that you are foreseeing before, uh, how could you actually benefit out of that uh, uh, is what you are going to display to us. Can we move further? Simulations, my colleagues will talk about it much more in detail. Uh, I would leave it for the time being. And uh, Ayush, can we move to the program director's part of it? So I can introduce myself. Uh, first of all, I, I don't want to talk too much about myself, but at the end of the day, I'm the person who will be responsible for this third broad area that I was mentioning about strategy, uh, performance management, and design thinking. Um, of course, you know, I have a, a very long background of having worked in multiple universities overseas and having published in this area within the accounting uh, sphere. Um, of course, I would introduce to you my other co-directors alongside. Abhilash uh, is my esteemed colleague in finance, you know, uh, corporate finance, uh, corporate governance, valuation, etc. I see him as an expert. Uh, a resident expert in our school. Um, so ob obviously he comes with a very prestigious degree, a doctorate degree from IIT Bombay and a Fulbright visiting scholarship at, scholar at uh, UC Berkeley. And the uh, University of California at Berkeley is one of the top business schools and top universities um, in the US. So uh, no wonder, you know, a few lined up uh, uh, experts have uh, arrived from there, including um, some of the very leading economists have come from that area. So Abhilash has gained a lot of training in that area. And uh, he has also give, been given an award uh, in 2011 by the CMO Council TM Asia Pacific. And of course, you know, he has been a member of the Primary Markets Advisory Committee uh, of the Securities and Exchange Board of India uh, from, for a long period, for about nearly five years, from 2017 to 22. And he's also an advisor to VFSI Skill Development Initiative of Government of Kerala. So he is a native of Kerala, but he can also speak the West, uh, North Indian languages. And he also combines a lot of skills. And he's also an expert in that particular area, having gained uh, proficiency from top schools in the US. Welcome, Abhilash, and we'll move on. Of course, I don't have words to say about my colleague, Mrithul Kumar Sagar. You know, professor of practice in economics. He is the, going to be the resident expert in the, within the first area, uh, namely macroeconomic policies, financial markets, etc. This is one person that we would all love to have in our, every business school. Um, but you know, we were fortunate at IAMK to have him here. So he is going to be driving through all the aspects which relates to national accounting, measurement, fiscal, monetary policies equity, money markets, debt markets, treasury markets, commodity markets, is going to go through all of them and try to relate how CFOs must relate themselves to the latest kind of uh, policy decisions and how they should actually time uh, their understanding and the decision making within the organizations. So once again, um, you know, I can't keep reading his subcollates because they run uh, so long. So in short, I will tell him, He's a stalwart. He's a stalwart and he is from the RBI executive director uh, formally. So no words more to say. And both Abhilash and myself have got a great deal of respect for Mridul. So once again, very, very welcome Mridul for this program. Yeah. So with this kind of a broad indication, what I will do at this stage is to um, lead it to my two colleagues to talk about briefly about the program and then thereafter invite questions from the audience, if that's okay, Arish. Yes, yes, Professor, that seems perfect. I'll just go to the program slide and um, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Abhilash to talk about the program a little and then we'll move on to Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a very good morning to all aspiring participants and thank you for that very generous introduction, Professor Ritharan. Mm -hmm. Professor Mridal, good morning to you. So uh, I see in the questions uh, a very, very commonly asked, uh, or I mean, it's a rhetorical question that we get almost every year from our PGP students. 
And I must say that uh, if our young PGP students ask this question, I'm sure that as veterans, you also have the same question at a different level. And which is, uh, do I need to have a, a professional qualification as a CA, CFA? So let me start with the standard story that I tell my students that when you come to a B school, we are very unlike a MA in economics where all the people have a graduation mostly to do with economics or say a MD where everybody is from a medicine background or say a MSc or an MTech. So B school is very different. And the way we are trained to teach is also very different. Not to say that we are superior or inferior, but that it has to be different because we face diversity at a much higher level. So if you have to teach to students who have, say, graduated in BSc in chemistry, and you have to teach accounting, economics, finance, uh, that actually is uh, something we are used to. So there are two concerns people have or my our students have which is that are you going to water it down to a level where uh, i'm not going to gain anything well then the whole purpose of the program and our purpose as academicians is also defeated let me say that uh, one of the things that we as academicians cherish is to learn from the feedback and questions that you folks ask let me give you a small illustration, which happened very recently, about two months back. One of our ex one of our executive participants had come in for uh, an in-campus module, and I happened to teach them. And I used to teach them about uh, project finance, infrastructure finance, and I was talking to them about escrow accounts. And this person who's a very senior person in the corporate world. They asked me about a trust and retention account. So then I had to uh, tell the person, I need to read more and get back to you. And trust me, that one question enlightened me. And I'm sure that, that uh, the next day I'd gotten back to the student, we had a fruitful discussion. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that we as academics look forward to upskill, uplearn, present, co-create knowledge. So in a classroom, we need people with different skill sets. So you be from, say, an engineering background, so you can contribute to modules which are more related to tech side of finance. If you're from a law background, you'll be able to contribute to sessions related to the law side of finance. If you're a chartered accountant or a valuation CFA, everybody brings in and in a classroom we co-create knowledge and let me be very very clear out here you when you come to this program you choose it so there is a lot of volunteerism that comes along with your decision to choose this program and that's why when we get senior people participating in general we don't expect questions or we don't get those questions also like what i would ask in the exams I got a, you know, I got a question wrong. I got five marks less. I mean, these are things which I think people at a, a good level in the industry, they don't care. Rather, they bring in with, uh, bring us a whole lot of practical issues, which we try to address together in the class. Some of the issues we already get exposed to, which we may actually be able to resolve right in the class. Some of them we co-create. So the idea is we don't need uh, any specific background, each of you would bring in your background to the class. That's right, Sajish. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the with that brief, uh, uh, as uh, let me also add on to uh, Professor Sridharan's comment on or what he had explained about the projects. So during this program, you would be going through a whole bunch of case studies. You'll also be looking at uh, maybe, uh, you know, coming up with your own venture. So as a part of your capstone project, you could actually think of uh, tying things together and say, come up with your own business idea. So you may uh, have to, you know, as a part of that project, uh, 
use your understanding of the economy do a top down forecast saying that you know basically my economy is growing this much so uh, i expect the consumption spending to go like this and based on that you may have a demand forecast you all kids can do a bottom up where you sort of use your skills uh, in uh, surveys and find out uh, what's the need based on that what you have to offer based on that what's your pricing decision so with all these put together you would then develop a financing pitch so all this uh, comes as a part of uh, your idea to start a venture and that's a kind of an integrative uh, you know project wherein you tie things together all the things that you, you learned Throughout to in different modules. Alternatively, we have also thought about uh, you know participants looking at uh, solving certain live issues in their organization. So, based on your experience of having gone through case studies, we would encourage you to draft these ideas or problems as live cases and then sort of uh, address them. So that's what I thought I will add. Rest will take it, uh, uh, you know, in the Q and A session. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, uh, and now we'll move on to uh, Professor Madhu. Uh, Professor, if you want to talk a little about uh, the program, Madhu, you have to unmute yourself. Madhu, you have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, First, let me thank uh, Emeritus for organizing this webinar because it will help with just information gap about uh, the program. And uh, thank you, my colleagues, uh, Professor Siridhanan and Professor Bilash each of one of you have already sort of clarified about the course, but I was quite motivated by what Abhilash was just saying that uh, uh, basically industry participants bring lot of expertise to the programs. And uh, we would be looking forward to interacting with CFOs, with the uh, people who are already uh, in in roles, uh, helping the CFOs and- professor, uh, Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Professor. Maybe your voice is a little uh, low. Can you speak a little louder okay. for the participants? Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so basically like, uh, 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 in in the sense that uh, there would be CFOs in the program, there will be prospective CFOs, uh, those who are already assisting CFOs uh, and want to transit to a higher role, uh, and also those who want to get into this transition roles to the CFOs. So it would be very exciting program to my mind. And Professor Abhilash was really uh, pitching this very strongly that uh, the industry brings to us the experience and we value it. Uh, and I was reminded of what Tom Cruise said in Jerry McGuire, help me help you. So that should be basically your uh, sort of contribution to this program. We look forward to it. But let me just touch upon it, how we conceive the program. And uh, three of us, have spent considerable time in crafting this program for you uh, because we had debates, we had uh, sort of discussions on how to uh, pitch it in the best way uh, for all of you. And here uh, I would like to point out that uh, basically uh, 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 as a CFO, you need to be a lifelong learner. And uh, things are that uh, the whole roles of CFOs in the industry are transiting very fast. And we have tried to incorporate that into the course uh, because, uh, you know, uh, gone are the days where CFOs just need to worry about uh, uh, accounting uh, in, in the sense of numbers. Accounting itself is an art now. Uh, it's also science, it's also an art. Uh, but uh, uh, sort of uh, that discussion, uh, we leave it to for the course. And Professor Siridhanan is the best man to guide you on that, uh, bringing all the international experiences on that. But uh, 
to to sort of pitch from where we were uh, coming was uh, in my 30 years in the industry uh, i've interacted with a lot of cfos who come over for discussions uh, earlier in my earlier role at reserve bank uh, and uh, the thing is that not many of them uh, fully grasp what's happening uh, on the macroeconomic and financial landscape. And this is where I would try to bring in and pitch uh, and bridge the gap in that sense. So mm, it's important, uh, the cost of capital cannot be worked out without really dissecting the macroeconomic trends, I must put it that way. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what we need to have is uh, basically tools and insight which will empower you to sort of uh, get into this uh, sort of uh, uh, exercises and the journey learnings. Uh, I, I would encourage that you track major macroeconomic data. Uh, if on uh, uh, yesterday, uh, basically, or uh, day before yesterday night, uh, when the GDP numbers came out, uh, we grew by 8.2%, the stellar number of all time. What is its interpretation? Why is uh, GVA so low, uh, a, a percentage point lower than the GD? Not so low. We are still outshining the rest of the world. So we, we will give you a perspective from the uh, international side also of uh, what it takes in terms of uh, economic dynamics and uh, the global consideration is what we have picked for you as the first module. And the second module is about financial markets. So my contribution to the program would essentially be focusing on these two things. Uh, we have lots of other experts in this program and uh, they will take you forward into the other areas. And uh, we are happy to sort of interact with you on all the questions you have. Uh, so without wasting much time, uh, if, if, if you, you would have seen what was presented in the slide today. So uh, what we are sort of uh, doing is uh, about the evolving role of CFO, the current global uh, economic environment, then about uh, measuring the economy. Fiscal uh, policies are very important for business planning. And uh, uh, what, what might happen with the, this new GDP numbers, it has a ramification for where your GFD to GDP ratio is and how basically the government might pitch its borrowing program, which will have a repercussion on interest rates in the economy. So we have to see those linkages and understand also the open economy part of exchange rates, etc. Uh, about the markets, my experience has been uh, that uh, the younger lot often tends to sort of not fully grasp the business cycles because if you are, I, I remember the time when I uh, took a break from Reserve Bank and was chief economist at the major I bank in India, I won't name it, but uh, uh, there my colleagues who were basically equity analysts, some of them, uh, they used to be so euphoric on the bubble which was getting built the credit bubble which was getting built before the global financial crisis, that they were giving fancy multiples and they were sort of really into a, uh, a sort of uh, thing. So we will take you to the brass text of hard theory as well as practice, as well as some very anecdotal evidences from which you can learn. I leave it at that and open the floor to the question or uh, let how you want to go about it. I'll put it back. To Mr. Professor Shivan, um, or emeritus can take it forward. Need it? Yes. Can I respond to uh, Sumit? Uh, he has a chat question. Okay. So Sumit, uh, look at uh, you know uh, the regulations, be it uh, internationally or in India, be it about disclosures, uh, about IFRS, India's. 
it's all getting aligned. So basically, when you go through the course, we cannot avoid but talk about the developments in the Western world, which are influencing practices in India, be it PCOB or which has uh, which has been the uh, uh, you know precursor to what we see today as NFRA, be it the uh, bankruptcy code. I mean, you look at uh, you the West. The West has different bankruptcy codes. Some are creditor friendly, some are letter friendly. How has that shaped up India's uh, approach to bankruptcy? You look at valuing startups, startups, uh, I mean, the, the most of the standard techniques won't work in startups. So we look at the best practices about valuing managerial flexibilities, which have been tried and tested abroad. You look at regulations such as dual class shares, which India has very recently adopted so how uh, with the dual class shares we could protect uh, the freedom of the founders and uh, basically i was just trying to uh, highlight few of the issues wherein uh, we just cannot escape discussing uh, what are the best practices and regulations in the western world and how we could uh, shape them and contextualize them in India. So that would be, I think that uh, that's what you are probably trying to ask. Yeah, that, uh, that's it. Yeah, over to your process, Sridhar. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you, Abhilash. Thank you, Mridho, for um, uh, supporting uh, this particular webinar by giving uh, much detailed information um, about this particular uh, program. Um, what I would like to also add to Sumit's issue um, about internationalization, apart from what Abhilash said, he, Abhilash has actually covered it in comprehensive approach, but just adding to it from a very specific accounting angle, we have this international accounting standards, which is made into Indian accounting standards. Now, uh, we can't avoid, um, you know, uh, some of the references to the international accounting standards or IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, and using that as part of our Indian accounting standards, etc. So very much internationally focused, globally focused is this particular program. Uh, and whatever that we are dealing with uh, is also aligned with um, our specific um, commitments and specific interests as well within our, uh, within our society. So it is trying to identify what would be suitable given what is happening elsewhere, right? So globalization, internationalization are very much at the core of this particular program. Uh, so uh, Professor, I think we are open for questions. So uh, uh, what I can do is I can read some, some questions from the chat and then anybody can pick that up. Sure. Uh, we have just received one more question. Um, uh, so Abhijit Kulkarni is asking, um, um, how is this program, the CFO program, different from a regular MBA or a PGDB, uh, PGDM uh, program uh, that is offered at an entry level? So they want to understand how is this? Yeah. Uh, let me let me quickly answer this question and pass it on to Abhilash and Burdur for any further additions which I might have probably left out. First and foremost, this a, MBA is a kind of a common program that covers a very different uh, sphere. Uh, that covers a wide lot of areas other than uh, not just finance, but uh, more than finance. Uh, but here we are trying to look at CFOs in particular and what would CFOs require. Uh, and in particular, those aspects that relate to uh, the other fields uh, which are required to be uh, the part of the knowledge profile for a CFO is what we are holding at. Uh, in this particular area. So for example, uh, we are not talking too much about marketing in this. We are not talking too much about operations, uh, which are all part of the MBA program, uh, but we are talking a lot about the different aspects that will have an impact on, an, on a CFO's life. Uh, my colleagues could add if they want to say something to this. Abhilash Mrutu, Abhilash? Uh, so, uh, 
basically most uh, most of our uh, uh, pgp students they are freshers or at best one to two years of experience work ex mostly in the services sector but you know these are kids who don't understand something called a gdp i mean they might have heard about the term but what does it mean they might be confused about inflation they might no i mean they might probably have never heard about something called a cagr so why why i am telling these instances they might not have uh, thought about something called or heard about something called a balance sheet and a pnl so why we tell this is because uh, when we get working professionals uh, working professionals you know throughout their deliberations with their peers superiors on projects you got some exposure to terms you know where those terms are used so what we have tried to do when we develop this program is that to first bring you people together at a certain bare minimal understanding which might be a faster process given a experienced cohort and then build over it so in most of the modules what we tried to do is the first few sessions we tried to bring in uh, I, you know consciously to bring all of you on a similar platform and then build over it so uh, yeah so uh, abhijit uh, that's what I, I would say is the biggest difference uh, that it's faster and easier with you people because you know a whole bunch of vocabulary you also know where it is used so as a corollary let me also answer another question which has been put in chat box because that's what professor abilash was trying to explain uh, so there is a question that could you please explain the rationale behind the physical requirement for secondary school grade for experienced professionals applying for this executive education program now uh, uh i i think uh, the point which uh, professor bilash was making was that you need to have some homogeneity in the class to sort of raise the level of standards uh, uh, take you along that path and something so we ought to have some minimum qualification but i don't think what is written is our minimum qualification uh, what we had decided correct me uh, professor bilash if i'm wrong i think we decided on that there should be minimum is graduation 10 plus 2 plus 3 or 10 years of experience roughly uh, and uh, uh, anybody having ca cs cwa cfa cost management uh, degrees can also apply i think that's a reasonable sort of a pitch to have a good cohort to have involved discussions and stuff uh, yeah i'll leave it there thank you so much professor for answering that i have another question it's a bit of a technical question for admission to the program but the uh, uh, seem has asked that there are some requirements for secondary school grades uh, for admission to the program and uh, 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 mostly i think what uh, he wants to ask is that can we create an exception for working professionals um, uh, uh, for the program so yeah uh in general if you want me to answer this of course uh everything will can be gone can be taken on a case to case basis so exceptions can always be part of the rule so we are happy to do that uh but we would not like to put that as a kind of a common uh, uh rule rather take it on an exception basis more than happy to do that uh, on a case to case basis so so basically uh, professors have uh, shown kindness and we can take definitely take up uh, some cases for exception um uh, but moving on to the next question uh, i have a question from sujesh and he's asking how do employers value or recognize such programs in professional qualification um i i'm assuming they want to understand if employers also value uh, such programs and considering the val uh, the brand that comes along with that is imk and kellogg um, um there should be some recognition there so anything that you want to touch upon that 
Sure, I, I'm happy to address this particular question. Um, of course, you know, brand does matter, you know, in, in the real world uh, to a large extent, but regardless of the brand, uh, the content that we are going to offer, uh, the kind of expertise that we are bringing to this particular program uh, to dwell upon is something that even I can't expect anywhere else to get. Uh, for example, uh, Professor Mithul Kumar Sagar with his wide experience in uh, macroeconomic finance, fiscal policies, et cetera, is, is a very rare find uh, in business schools. Uh, I'm sure my colleague Abhilash would also agree to this. And uh, similarly, you know, uh, uh, you know, although expertise which uh, Abhilash has, uh, which is on corporate finance and uh, valuations, mergers, acquisitions, can be available in other business schools as well. But the point is that we actually blend together with what Professor Pradul is offering, what Abhilash is offering, what I have with me, you know, together with other industry experts, et cetera. It's kind of creating a very unique program uh, with a unique set of content that can be highly valuable at the end, which anybody who goes through the program will find himself or herself, you know, the kind of value addition that they have got. And uh, once the participants know that they have obtained the value, uh, added value, then it's just a matter of convincing their employers. And uh, it's very easy. Once you have the commitment, once you have the conviction with yourself, pretty easy to convince anybody else. And very soon, even the employers are going to find out the difference once the program is over uh, and once you have completed your capstan project, uh, even uh, the employers will find out the difference automatically. That's what I would like to say. Of course, I would leave up uh, to my colleagues, Abhilash and Mirdu. So uh, with working professionals, uh, the pro uh, we normally deal with less experienced students. With working professionals, you've already created an identity and uh, we try to build on that identity. So uh, I think IMK has uh, by now established itself as a serious player in the executive education market. For example, way back in the 2000s, when uh, the ministry wanted some institution, preferably an IAM, to take over the mantle of uh, addressing digital education, that is teach to working executives across India using some platform. Remember, this is 2000s. So IAMK was the first institution which started, We part then our partner used to be Hughes, and we had uh, offered a program then. So in some sense, uh, we have established ourselves as a serious, uh, you know, participant in the executive education arena. So to that extent, uh, I think we are doing a decent job, but obviously there is more to improve and uh, we will learn as uh, newer technologies will come and newer expectations need to be addressed. Makes sense. Um, thanks for answering uh, that question, professors. Um, there's another question and a very interesting one. Um, so in today's in, 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 uh, so Arun uh, uh, Menon is asking that in today's world, CFOs can't do a role in the traditional way. They need to be actively engaged in driving digital transformation, seamless integration of technology. And he wants to understand how all of this is getting covered in the program. Um, I know for a fact that there are a lot of components around this, but please, professors, if you want to touch upon this topic. So I think in the sixth week of the course, we have had uh, some topics which will be of interest to you. So uh, uh, there we are sort of covering issues of digital platforms, of uh, artificial intelligence, maybe even climate change and stuff. So it's not that we are not covering, but uh, uh, this is not a specialized course on uh, digital uh, uh, sort of uh, business itself. It's focused on CFOs, what CFOs need. Uh, and we have had some issues 
uh, integrated with that in view of the changing role of CFOs. Uh, if you think it's not enough, we can help you out for deeper learning um, offline on these issues by giving you some references. You can come back and discuss with us also. Thank you. Anybody else wants to submit? Please submit. Module 9 actually uh, has some of the topics uh, which uh, Arun is trying to ask. So Module 9 uh, uh, talks about uh, digital transformation, fintech and big tech. So digital platform strategies. So there are some of these topics, but uh, I think Arun's concern may be to the extent to which we may be able to cover so I think that uh, question Prasam Rudul has already answered that this is, uh, uh, I mean, a program we all three sat together and uh, decided what should be the relative emphasis. So there were some uh, choices we made, but, uh, you know, we would always evolve if there is a need to emphasize more on a module that we can see after, you know, as we learn together. Perfect. That's it from my side. I Thank you so much. Kellogg content also has some of that. So yes. So so Kellogg has two specific modules, uh, specifically focused around technology deployment, integration, and age of disruption. So that will also cover some piece of that. Uh, I have another question. This is around time and dedication to the program. So um, uh, Abhijit Kulkarni is asking, since the classes are conducted only on the Sundays, how much time is needed to allocate on a daily basis? Um, um, so uh, he wants to understand if working professionals can manage the program effectively. So uh, let me just briefly say before my colleagues pitch in, we, we have had some courses specially designed for the working professionals. And while obviously they will find this uh, a bit strenuous in the sense that they have their regular roles, they have to do this, but really speaking, this is the best way out. And I find most of them are able to cope with this. I mean, we have an executive education MBA program. We even are encouraging a sort of a working professional to register for doctoral program at the IMK, and they have been able to cope with it with some leaves, et cetera. In your case, leaves won't be required uh, because most of it is uh, sort of online. Uh, but I would uh, uh, really encourage you that uh, just don't come to the class on Sunday and then listen and go away. There will be some assignments, something additional, which you can do without much hassle, finding some time off um, at home by putting in a couple of extra hours, uh, scheme it well, yeah. Um, and I concur with what Mridul was saying um, in this regard, as regards the uh, the preparation time itself is actually very minimal. But when it comes to the time that you've got to uh, spend after the session is over, maybe about a couple of hours each week would be what I would tend to think to assimilate the ideas that have been provided by the professors during that session, the Sunday session, and uh, note down some of the key understandings that they have got such that they can include it in their capstone project towards the end. You know, the whole idea for us is to provide that knowledge to them that they will put or integrate that into their capstone project towards the end. And we would like to see how much of that learning has been reflected in that capstone project. That's how we would like to see. So I would tend to agree uh, with what Mirzul was saying. A couple of hours after the, um, uh, the session is over, just to reflect upon the learnings, note down the key points, and uh, see how that it actually going to be integrated with the capstone idea that they would be developing right from the beginning, um, et cetera, would be the job that would be required for a program like this. Uh, I'm sure Abhilash would have something similar to say. Very true. So I used to be the chairperson of our executive education in Kochi. And uh, during my interactions 
with students after they graduate they so they gave me some very very enlightening one liners so one this is from a woman who is married who has who you, who has uh, children in uh, studying in uh, fifth grade and say third grade and uh, she had to balance job home career and specifically kids education also when i say home yes but then kids education also and uh, on our, she was our gold medalist and in, in her speech she said imk taught me that 24 hours is a lot of time so i'm sure that uh, you know as you go through the run your sincerity itself will make you find time so I think uh, 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 you're actually asking the wrong person because I don't go through that grind as you are going through. So I may not be able to, you know, with sincerity express the same, but I can for sure tell you what my students have told after they graduated. So these are, I mean, another person, he also said that, you know, earlier he, he was a retired bank per, uh, employee and he said that, you know, I used to have more time earlier, but I never knew, knew how to use it. Once they went through this uh, two, uh, two year grind, they sort of uh, uh, find ways to prioritize. So I think uh, long story cut short, there is uh, enough time for all of us. It's just that we have our priorities messed up. <laughs> Thank you so much, professors, on talking about that. I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, we, we can always find time uh, for learning. Um, um, so um, another another question, very interesting question from Sumit Mittal. Um, uh, they want to understand how this course is current with international practices um, and procedures and how they can essentially uh, help the working finance professionals um, uh, uh, for in their corporate lives um, is uh, what they want to ask. Mr. Ayush, I think we have uh, addressed this uh, a, a, I mean, a little while earlier that uh, yeah. when we said that uh, we the, the pro, uh, currently, unlike earlier days in India, you talk about theories, you need to look at international best practices. So we had discussed this. Thank you so much, Professor. Um, uh, so one last housekeeping question that we have is how do how do participants get hard copies of study material for future reference? Um, the access to study material will be revoked after the course ends. Um, um, professors, um, I, I think we, uh, we don't revoke the access to the study material after the course ends, right? Um, the participants will still have access to all the material that they have gone through. Of course, of course, yeah. But having said that, one has to be conscious of the fact that uh, what my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Mithul Kumar Sagar has, you know, he he teaches uh, macroeconomic uh, policies, fiscal theory, fiscal uh, policies and uh, monetary policies, etc. So he looked for the latest circulars from the government, etc. So. Uh, although that material will be available on the time, uh, on the date and time that uh, he's going to teach a particular topic, uh, it might probably be not relevant after a year or two. Uh, but one, he would probably definitely give you, I think, uh, uh, where to get that kind of an information and how to locate that information that you can, so that you can keep yourself current with that. As regards my area, um, with regard to st strategic implementation, planning, design thinking, etc., I've suggested a couple of books that they can always take it with them, and that there will not be any expiry uh, of the um, uh, of the e-book as well regarding that. So absolutely not a problem, and so will be the case with my colleague Abhilash's areas of teaching as well. See, our intention is not just to dump material with you. We will motivate you, we'll encourage you to sort of be able to access material in the course of time because, uh, I mean, the rate of antiquation often becomes fast. So it will be our endeavor to help you to find out sources from which you can yourself keep 
updating you even well after one year course is over. So this you can imbibe and that's where you grow, you know, in the industry ladder. So constant upgradation is a must and it cannot just be sort of be fed at one point of time. So uh, what are the websites? What are the other things? We'll be telling you all that. So, yeah. Thank you so much, professors. Um, um, I have another question. Um, uh, Sajesh, missed which portion of the modules will be covered by Kellogg? I can quickly answer that question. Um, so there are two modules that are getting covered by Kellogg. Uh, one module is module number 10, that is leading growth strategy. Um, this is covered by Kellogg. And the module number 13, that is business leadership in the age of disruption. This is also covered by Kellogg. Um, so that's that. Um, I see that we have mostly covered all the programs. Uh, sorry, all the questions. Um, let me just see. Um, um, so there's another question by Sumit. Uh, and most probably this will be our last question of the day because we're at time, right, professors? Uh, but uh, just, to, just to take one last question. Um, uh, 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 does this program help us for international markets for employability? Uh, so would we be able to learn international um, concepts that will help us uh, help uh, prospective students with international markets? Um, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, from the perspective of whatever that we are, I think we had discussed this a bit earlier. Maybe I would reframe this answer again. Definitely, uh, most of the concepts that we discuss are uh, internationally driven because changes happen concurrently. Whatever happens in the West, today it's a global marketplace. So everything, every other place, it has to be following suit. So to that extent, yes. Uh, but regarding the employability, uh, of course, you know, it depends finally. Uh, we will not be finding out placements and all that. Uh, but, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the confidence, the conviction, the brand value, everything that uh, the, the, the knowledge that these students or the participants gain out of this program, etc., can all place them in a very high level uh, compared to what they would be prior to the program. Um, so how they can market themselves, it is up to them, I think, rather than our focus on telling them, yes, it is employable internationally, etc. Uh, but I'm sure the concepts that we are going to be teaching, dealing with, interacting with the students, learning together, et cetera, uh, is definitely of world standard. That I must, I must agree because having worked internationally for several years, almost three decades, uh, sorry, two and a half decades, I can very much vouch for the kind of standards that we are offering in this business school as well. So what we are offering is world class. I'm not boasting, but I'm admitting whatever that we are saying. And therefore, uh, employability can follow given the conviction and the standards and the, uh, the confidence that the participants gain at the end. That's how I would like to answer. And unless Abhilash and Mridhul would like to add to this. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much, professors, for covering all these questions. And we really appreciate the time that you have given us. Uh, I just want to quickly conclude the webinar just by talking about Emeritus, the technical partner over here. Um, the, the Emeritus has been in this field for last 12 plus years. We're working with 55 plus universities across the world. IMK is one of the prestigious institutes that we work with and we are delivering this program with. We have over four, 450 plus programs. Um, uh, we have learners coming in from 160 countries um, and we have 300 plus leading faculty, three of them, which are here on this uh, on this webinar. Uh, and we have supported 2.5 million learners globally. Um, so we're proud of partnering with IM Kohikor uh, for delivering this program. And we know that this will be a huge success in this batch and coming batches. Um, 
and just to leave with some people with final if anybody has any more questions we have a very dedicated team of program advisors uh, whom you can reach on or reach out on this number or you can write us on this email where we will be able to answer anything that you have also we have one function that you can whatsapp us and ask questions directly on whatsapp if you are not comfortable calling um and um, we we will get you back with any of your inquiries within 24 hours um but our responses can take 72 hours if it's a weekend or a holiday sorry for that um so all of that said uh, we have an application deadline coming on uh, 11th of june um, um we are giving some sort of a benefit uh, so the program price is around 6.5 lakh rupees but if you apply before 11th of june we will give you a 40000 early enrollment benefit um uh, having said that i was i really enjoyed all the insights and all the lovely teachings that the professors have already given us in this session and uh, thank you so much professors for giving us this time I, and me and the participants really look forward to hearing more from you thank you so thank much you. Thank, thank you so you. much once again and uh, to wind up this session from uh, on the side of my uh, team and myself, we also thank you in uh, in the process of uh, in, uh, allowing us to interact with you. Uh, we also look forward to an exciting journey. Uh, although we have had uh, interactions with several management development program participants over the years, we specifically look forward to this because this is a kind of a very explicit cohort that is kind of uh, focused towards one particular dream goal, CFO. So, yes. Thank you. Building the future CFOs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.